Duchenne is short for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the leading genetic killer of young boys worldwide. It can occur in any family, of any race, from any background. Our son was five when we were told he had it. By 10, he'll be in a wheelchair. Most of these boys will not live past their teens. Today, there is no cure. But for the first time, for these families, there is reason to hope. There are other muscular dystrophy organizations out there. But Cure Duchenne is dedicated to finding a cure for this disease. Cure Duchenne, our mission is our name. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the most common of the genetic disorders, which ends up being about one out of 3,500 males. The incidence of Duchenne muscular dystrophy is almost the same all over the world. What happens when a child has Duchenne dystrophy is they look fairly normal up through early school age until kindergarten or first grade. Although it's present really from the time the baby's born, you usually see the effects when the little boy is about three or four years old, when it's noticeable that they have difficulty getting up from the floor, they can't run as fast as their friends, they can't climb stairs very easily, they can't jump and run around like, like other little boys. And this weakness that they have in their muscles is progressive, so that if you don't treat them, if you don't give them treatments that we have already, they can be in a wheelchair by the time they're nine, 10, 11, that kind of age. Tyler never crawled as a baby. He never uh, rolled and did the things that normal babies would do. Um, never hand crawled, always flopped. Um, we, we always had an inclination because the disease was in his mother's family. There are 40 neuromuscular diseases. Duchenne is the number one fatal disease. Tyler's in what they call a quad state. He is a total care patient. Um, and a quad is someone who cannot move from the neck down. In November 2002, our son was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And the first thing we thought is that uh, Jerry Lewis has this handled, doesn't he? And what we found is that over the years, less than 5% of MDA's annual budget actually goes to Duchenne research. We were really surprised to find how little strategic planning and business accountability was going into these projects. A lot of the funding that comes from federal agencies or very large organizations it takes a long time to actually make it into the scientist's hands. In our organization, being small, focused, targeted, concise, we truly can make impact and use the dollars efficiently. We can react very quickly to research opportunities and fund the scientists who have promising research right now. Now in therapeutics, the goal is generally pretty clear. We know the one component of muscle, dystrophin, that's missing. So ideally, we just put it back. Well, dystrophin is a very large gene and a very large protein, and so that's been a big limitation. How do you get it into the muscle where it belongs? Now it's very exciting because we're moving into a phase of trying out new treatments and trying to get new therapies out into the clinics. PTC Therapeutics has developed this new drug called PTC-124. What it tries to get the patient's gene to do is not so much skip over, but get it to read through. So it's sort of like a stop sign is a mutation and the, the drug lets the car just speed right through the stop sign. Another approach right now appears to be exon skipping. One way to think of it is a molecular patch. You're making a little piece of DNA that acts as a drug that goes in and actually finds the gene throughout the patient's muscle and has it skip over the mutation. So it sort of restores the gene, not completely to its normal state, but pretty close and close enough so that the patient can now make dystrophin in their muscle and replace what was missing when they didn't have it before. So we have to help these kids that are around today and tomorrow and will always be. There are ideas in the pipeline and developments in the pipeline which will be applicable to all of the boys. These are things like the upregulation of eutrophin, which is another protein that's involved in, in maintaining the muscle membrane potentially, and also developments from gene therapy and stem cell technologies which won't be dependent on what mutation the boys have. If we can collaborate each other, we can make a very good progress in the cure therapies of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Because of Cure Duchenne's investment in some of these projects and the success, the early success that they've seen, both federal government and venture capital firms have come in and supplied huge amounts of money after that. Funding from organizations like Cure Duchenne can make quantum leaps, a promising idea input from a small organization which can come quickly can make the progress much, much faster. Cure Duchenne is, is a very um, special and, and good organization in the sense that their team works very, very hard at understanding exactly what's wrong, what needs to be fixed, 
and how to fix it. Resolving Duchenne in this manner will also help other situations, longevity, cancer, lifespan, all of those things will take benefit from Duchenne being resolved. So it is a very good idea to uh, give some uh, money to very early stage of the research. We're in the media, we have poker tournaments, concerts, and we have a wonderful band named Catchpenny that wrote a song for us titled The Chance for a Lifetime. We run marathons, we are the Cure Duchenne Crusaders, and we run for the boys that can't. More than 10,000 runners will be on hand for Sunday's Free Scale Marathon. Last year, Tim Ravel ran for fun. This year, it's much more personal. Just the fact that I'm blessed enough to, to still be running after 20 miles, and, and the thought of my own son not being able to do that, that, that's hard to think about. I'll be running in the place of all those that can't run. Jack thinks he's got a bad squirt gun because he doesn't have the strength in his finger anymore to squeeze the trigger. But he doesn't understand. He knows he's got something wrong with his muscles. But even his hands, every muscle in his body, the more he uses it, the weaker he gets. Open your mind for one second so that you don't have to sit the way I sit wondering if tomorrow morning is going to be the last morning you wake up to see your child. What we're hoping now is that the boys have a longer life expectancy and more quality of life. So if we can cure uh, the patient or if we can give a good quality of life to their patient, they will be very, very happy. To be able to sort of close that, that whole chapter on the disease as, a, as an entity would be fantastic. But I've come to terms with what I have and just to live each day like there's no tomorrow. The cure is right around the corner. And with everybody's help, we truly can save our boys. We're really in a race against time. That's why we need everybody's help. To keep fighting for a cure. I just want to give them a chance. I want to grow up to be a fireman. I want to grow up to be a soccer player. I want to grow up to be a cowboy. I just want to grow up. And the chance for a lifetime. Cure to Shen. Our mission is our name. To make a donation or to find out more, visit curedeshen.org or call 949-721-4063. Thank you.